Well, I probably should wait until tomorrow, but I'm itching to do this video. But it's late. It's 11.57 p.m. April 21, 2018. Let's see if I can just get it done. Quickly. Yeah, quickly. Trillions upon trillions of viruses fall from the sky each day. New York Times posted April 13, 2018. Isn't it interesting that scientists scientists are just now figuring this out. Trillions upon trillions of viruses fall from the sky each day. And it just so happens that scientists are now figuring this out after decades of increased spraying of chemicals, heavy metals, biologicals, viruses, bacteria, fungi, oh, all sorts of things. How do they calculate trillions upon trillions? Scientists have surmised there is a stream of viruses circling the planet above the planet's weather systems, but below the level of airline travel. These viruses, I read an article a couple of weeks ago, how these viruses, they were coming in from Africa, they were coming in, I don't know, dust storms, or I, I don't think. All right, so if they're above the weather system, how are they getting there? And how is it that scientists are just now discovering this? Very little is known about this realm, really. Very little is known about the realm of atmosphere. Oh, uh, all those people who've been studying the atmosphere for longer than a century. They just don't know much about that realm. So uh, the weather system happens in the lowest part of the atmosphere, the, the troposphere. And if it's above the weather systems, that means that these viruses are in the stratosphere. All of these levels of the atmosphere have been studied extensively certainly by those who wanted to engage in weather modification. Our government, our military, have studied these levels. Okay. Very little is known about this realm. And that's why the number of deposited viruses stunned the team in Spain. Each day, they calculated some 800 million viruses cascade onto every square meter of the planet. My God, wow. So, we're saturated in viruses. Globe trotting, trotting viruses are swept into the air by sea spray and lesser numbers arrive in dust storms. The viruses are swept into the air by sea spray. So they're swept into the air by sea spray and they land above the weather system but below airline travel. You need, uh, look, I can't, I can't speak to this. This is not my field. But something is hitting me as if are we being set up for an explosion of active viruses where an awful lot of people die? You know how they begin to create this narrative and put it out there? And then suddenly we have an epidemic of some strange virus? And it's the seed has already been planted in people's heads in their minds so they can come out and say, oh, this is one of the viruses, one of the trillions upon trillions of viruses that fell from the sky. I guess it didn't fall from the sky, though. It was swept into the air by sea spray. Oh, I'm sorry, most of the globe trotting viruses are swept into the air. Most? Is that referring to the trillions? Most of the trillions? New York Times, come on. Unimpeded by friction, 
with the surface of the earth, you can travel great distances. And so intercontinental travel is quite easy for viruses. That came out of the mouth of a marine virologist at the University of British Columbia. It wouldn't be unusual to find things swept up in Africa being deposited in North America. The virospear. Oh, so they want to name this above the weather system below where the planes fly. The virospear. Generally, it's assumed these viruses originate on the planet and are swept upward, but some researchers theorize that viruses actually may originate in the atmosphere. There is a small group of researchers who believe viruses may even have come here from outer space, an idea known as panspermia. Hmm. Whatever the case, viruses are the most abundant entities on the planet by far. Uh, a Dr. Suttle and his team found hundreds of millions of viruses in a square meter. They counted tens of millions of bacteria in the same space. I don't know about you guys, but as far as I'm concerned, I think those viruses and bacteria were sprayed. You know, part of the geoengineering. It's hard to overstate the central role that viruses play in the world. Viruses contain a vast, diverse array of unknown genes and spread them to other species. <gasps> the planet is changing. So, are they setting us up? to just accept all of these drastic radical changes to the ecosystem of the earth just by explaining it as viruses. They modulate the function and evolution of all living things, but to what extent remains a mystery, but they tell you the extent. Viral DNA eventually become part of the nervous system of modern humans, playing a role in consciousness, nerve communication, and memory formation. They hardly know anything about consciousness, but they somehow know that viral DNA became uh, part of consciousness. Hmm. Do viruses even fit the definition of something alive? They lack the ability to reproduce and so must take over the cell of a host. The, the virus injects its own DNA into the host. Sometimes those new genes are useful to the host and become part of its genome. genome. They are changing our DNA. So, when I guess that becomes common knowledge, they'll blame it on viruses. The microwave frequencies affect our DNA. Anyway, researchers recently identified an ancient virus that inserted its DNA into the genomes of four-limbed animals that were human human ancestors. That snippet, snippet of genetic code called ARC is part of the nervous system of modern humans and plays a role in human consciousness. Nerve communication, memory formation, and higher order thinking. Okay, my higher order thinking is taking me to how the hell do they know about? They're suggesting that it's viruses that have created our critical thinking skills. Okay. 
I guess God didn't give us these brains that we have. And well, when you when you really know how most of the people on the planet use their brains, one would think it's not God. Perhaps it is a virus. Because they're not really using them very well. Anyway, this human consciousness, they don't know anything about it. So how can they claim that this virus is part of and plays a role in our human consciousness? Between 40% and 80% of the human genome may be linked to ancient viral invasions. Wow. Now that is a leap. Filtered viruses out of seawater, but left their prey bacteria. So viruses, their prey is bacteria. When that happens, plankton in the water stop growing. Are they suggesting that these viruses, the trillions upon trillions, may also be the reason why so much is dying in our oceans, our lakes. Yes, I do have, especially with the New York Times and mainstream media, you got to read between the lines. One study estimated that viruses in the ocean cause a trillion trillion, a trillion trillion infections every second. How does one calculate that? And th these infections destroying some 20% of all bacterial cells in the sea daily. So are they writing this to give us an explanation for our oceans, the ecosystem within our ocean dying? Oh, it's not Fukushima. It's not the militaries who are using their um, sonar killing off so so many fish and whales and dolphins. And it's not the plastering of the oceans with all of the chemicals and heavy metals and biologicals and fungi and all of the crap that they are spraying from the planes. No, it's these viruses. An invasive virus can cause rapid widespread changes and even lead to extinction. Isn't that interesting? All right. Um, I had more bookmarked. Yes, these kinds of ecological changes can last for centuries or even millennia. Combined with drought, large numbers of people died from a particular virus. They died from starvation. This was back in, uh, God, in the 1800s. Yeah, uh, this virus so many people died of starvation from rinder, rinder pest spread. And guess what? Rinder pest. Well, it was completely wiped out by intensive vaccination. Gotta throw that in. Not only in Africa, but globally in 2011. I didn't know that there was a vaccination, a vaccine for Rinder pest. I didn't even know Rinder pest existed. But hell, I'm not a virologist. All right. Um, I do want to bring your attention to microwave frequency warfare, the real Cold War. This is a uh, one of Barry Trower's writings and if you don't know who Barry Trower is well the cooking of humanity um, and I'll just let you listen to a few minutes of this video 
well, I, I, um, it, it's not just the general public who, who don't really understand it. Um, the scientists who have produced it have absolutely no idea of the mathematics of the waveform that it's going to produce or that it is producing. Um, we know that it is in the, generally it's in the gigahertz range. Now I'll explain that. <clears throat> but um, what it's, what it's, uh, the, the problems are, is that first there are, like, like its predecessors, there are no safety checks at all carried out on 5G. There are no safety tests at all carried out on anything to do with 5G. It is known that the gigahertz range, in other words, the waveform, the, the waves that come out, it is known that they are in the same frequency as some of our cellular processes in our body, some of our cells. It is known they can interfere with the cellular processes of the body. Um, <clears throat> there are several different waveforms for 5G. It isn't just one wave. Already, I do know that 40 leading groups or 40 leading groups of scientists um, in 40 countries, uh, leading scientists in 40 countries have warned that the waveforms from 5G uh, can be particularly harmful, not just to humans, but to all living species. And I can tell you as a military man that one of the top waveforms for 5G is incredibly close. And in terms of electronic waveforms, there really isn't much difference from the new microwave weapon called active denial that is now in use for crowd control to subdue and bring, bring down crowds. And that is known or reputed uh, to cause visual disturbances, certainly neurological disturbances, um, heart disturbances, all, all sorts of things. Now, that is the, the, the new active denial, which can be also released from aircraft or beamed from aircraft. Uh, that is incredibly close to one of the frequencies on 5G. And as I said, that there are no, the waveform is so mathematically complex that nobody can really tell you how it's going to react, other than it makes a damn good weapon. Okay, so it makes a damn good weapon. Here he is talking about 5G microwaves. There's no safe place, nowhere to go. Um, I will link below to this video. We have so many people who are sick in our country. We have an explosion of disease, illness, syndromes in virtually all countries, particularly Western countries. Why? Because of the frequencies that we are saturated in. And, well, you just saw. Look at our skies. Aren't they just beautiful? No. They're actually dumping an awful lot of toxic chemicals, heavy metals, biologicals, fungi, all viruses, bacteria, human blood cells, a whole lot. With 5G, that's only going to increase, exponentially increase, disease, sickness, and illness. And they will have to they will have to blame it on something. And it might just be those trillions upon trillions of viruses falling from the sky. So, I want to read one particular paragraph in Barry Trower's writing. And here it is. And he is relating a conversation he had with an international scientist and this international scientist said 
something is really, really worrying me, and I have to tell somebody who can tell the world. Barry Trower knew what he was going to say because it had already been discussed in other countries. Barry Trower is a, um, a former... If you didn't get to read this, let me read it now. Barry Trower, former Royal Navy microwave weapons expert, lectures around the world on the dangers of microwave technologies, Wi-Fi, cell phones, cell towers, smart meters, baby monitors, and now 5G technology, which is being rolled out. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure that you understood who is writing this. So, he says that what this scientist wanted to tell him, he knew what he was going to, to say, that it had been discussed in other countries. He said, it is now possible to genetically change bacterium and virus, viruses, genetically change them. So, this is what they do. They come out with these articles and they claim that these scientists have found trillions of viruses right next to bacteria as if it's as if it's just a new discovery like this is a natural happening and it's not it's a creation by man um, he says you don't need more than two brain cells to work out where you go from here. Viruses are neither dead nor alive. They inhabit hosts. If I put a virus inside of a dormant bacteria that I know I can spring to life and I go to Norway or on a holiday, Norway on a holiday, or Denmark or Sweden, I just spread the virus around in the forests with the dormant bacteria and I come back. And I can wait, if I like, a hundred years, two hundred years, or two hours. It makes no difference. But then all I have to do with HARP or a similar device is to put the frequency off the ionosphere down into Norway, wherever I feel like it, the virus will spring to life because their host has sprung to life. This is where we are. So countries can now, just by introducing bacterium and viruses and what have you, they can totally devastate the economic possibilities of another country by making or taking from a dormant stage to an active stage. And Barry Trower has written it. He has many papers. Um, he said on international radio, and this was years ago that this this paper came out, but he went out to 95 countries Oh, on the radio show, it went out to 95 countries. And he said that scientists at the end of the war were hanged for what scientists today are doing and getting away with. And that is very true. So, just wanted to uh, let you know that we may, in probably not the distant future, but near future, hear about all of these crazy ancient viruses coming to life. And, oh my God, it's changing our ecosystem. It's killing off the oceans. It's changing our DNA and DNA in all life. I'll link below to it all, the video and articles. Ciao, guys.